to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto them in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Amen. Hold your place there and turn to Luke chapter number one. And I'll do some jumping around here in the book of Luke. Luke chapter number one. And verse number 26. We'll hold your place there in Matthew. We'll look at that in just a little bit. All right. Luke chapter one, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Now, by the way, that doesn't mean the sixth month. That means June. It's talking about in the sixth month of Elizabeth's uh, conception. The six months of her pregnancy, she's carrying John the Baptist. All right? Well, you, that's giving you some reference point. Verse 26 again. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house and lineage, or I'm sorry, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. When she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou hast conceived, or thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Amen. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Amen. I'm going to read it in a moment just a little bit more. But in, in case there's some confusion, she said, I don't, I don't know a man. The Bible said Joseph knew or not. It's not talking about she didn't know a man. She did, had never met a man. Not saying that Joseph had never met. met they, they didn't know each other like married people know each other. All right? We'll just leave it as innocuous as that. But that way you understand what it's talking about. So there's no chance... That Jesus was the son of Joseph. Amen. That's what it says. There was no chance. But, because they had to come together. But there was no chance that any man was the father Amen. of Jesus. Because Mary had not known any man in that way. All right, look at verse number 46. We're still chapter 1, verse 46. And Mary said, my soul... The magnify the Lord. This is when she'd gone to Elizabeth and, and the baby leaped in, the, in, in the Elizabeth's womb and all that. Mary breaks forth in this song. My soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things. And holy is his name. Amen. Jump down to chapter number 2 and verses 1 through 12. I'll finish up with these. Verses 1 through 12, chapter 2 of Luke. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. This taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. 
and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Galilee, uh, into Judea, uh, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished, that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swathed clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swollen clothes, lying in a manger. I'm going to stop there. You know I'm leaving out quite a bit of the Christmas story, even though I read quite a bit of the Christmas story. But let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to bless the reader's word. Brother Hugh, would you leave us in prayer? Please? Father, Lord, thank you again for another time to be in your house. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for how you blessed. I yes. Thank you uh, for the Sunday school hour. Good message there. I thank yes. you, Lord, for the Christmas season. Yes. Lord, we praise you for what you've done for us. Yes. And I pray, Lord, that if there's one here today that does not really understand the sacrifice that you paid for us and yes. for them, I pray today we see the Yes, yes Lord. I pray you help the pastor today. Yep. Speak through him. Give yep. us yep. hearts that are hungry yes. to hear. Yes. Praise you and thank you. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you for sending me seated. And I certainly do appreciate that prayer. Amen. Amen. Well, as I said, that there's I read quite a bit of the Christmas story, and uh, that's what we're celebrating today, remembering today, thinking on today, even though it's still yet a few days down the road this week, we will be celebrating the day known as Christmas, Christ's Day. Amen. It is a celebration of the day that our Lord was born. Amen. Well, we don't know for sure, as I said, that that December 25th is the day, but we do know that today is the Lord's day. Amen. Amen. Today is Christ's day. We don't just celebrate once a year. We celebrate once a week at least. Amen. Amen. When we remember that Christ got up from the grave. Not only was he born, but he bled and died, and he rose from the dead. Amen. And we celebrate that fact and rejoice in that fact, but we we. Celebrate the fact that God gave his son and that that uh, Christ is the reason for it. Now, a lot of people, different people, have different ways of celebrating this holiday. Amen. I don't want to focus on the way perhaps they may celebrate it, but I want to think about this this morning. I want to think about the birth of Jesus, our Savior. I looked up the word Savior because I was interested in how many times it's mentioned right here in the beginning of these two Gospels. Over and over and over, it talks about him being the Savior. Matter of fact, uh, let, me, let me point you back to some phrases that I underlined. In Matthew chapter number 1 and verse number 21, the last phrase says, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Amen. The name Jesus is the Greek form of the Hebrew name Joshua. And that me, and by the way, Joshua that led the children of Israel into Canaan land, his name originally was Oshia, and the, to, to give glory to God, uh, Moses called him Jehoshua, or Joshua as he came. That it's not just salvation, but it's salvation of the Lord. Amen. That's what that name particularly means. Amen. Salvation of the Lord. So when they named him Jesus, and by the way, that was a common name apparently in the region that day, uh, they were naming him Salvation. They were pointing to the fact that salvation had come. For he shall save his people from their sin. Now look at chapter number 1 and verse number 25. That last phrase, it says, And he called 
his name Jesus. Amen. When that baby was born, they called him salvation. Amen. They called him Savior. That's the idea there in that name. Now, in Luke chapter number 1 and verse number 31, I underline the last part of that phrase. He said, thou shalt, let me find it, verse number 31, and shalt call his name Jesus. That goes right along with what it said in Matthew chapter 1, verse 25. Look at verse number 35, that last phrase of verse number 35. This is the angel saying to Mary, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Amen. Amen. That holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Look at verse number 47, the last phrase. Mary said this about it. She called him God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God. My Savior. Amen. 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 Mary did not consider herself immaculate. Amen. Mary did not consider herself the Blessed Virgin with a capital B and a capital B. Well, it's a little B. She's blessed. All nations are going to call her blessed. All people are going to call her blessed. Amen. But not the Blessed Virgin Mary. That's not the idea that we've got there. We don't worship Mary. She didn't expect worship. Didn't want worship. Recognize she didn't deserve worship. She yeah. said the worship goes to God. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. the one who deserves the glory. Yeah. But she said yeah. the reason that he does is because I was just a sinner. And he saved me by his grace. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. She yeah. came to know him as her Savior. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Look at chapter number 2, verse number 11. Luke chapter 2, verse number 11. For unto you is born this day. I just don't mind the whole thing. It's so good. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, what I'm interested in pointing out here is that it's a baby born in a stable and laid in a manger in Bethlehem is called Christ the Messiah. Amen. He's called the Lord. He's called the Son of God. Amen. He's called God. He's called Jesus. He's called Savior. Amen. And that Amen. name Jesus simply means Jehovah says, he's God with us. He's called Emmanuel, which means God with us. When you go back to Isaiah, here's one of the things that I found interesting. When I looked up the different times that the word Savior is found in the Bible, uh, there's a number of times, all but one time, and I forgot now, I think it's 37 times if my mind's right. I think that's right. But all but one time, it's a capital S because it's always talking about Jesus. There's one time in the book of Hosea, I believe it is, that there's a, a little S. But when I looked in there, that... In the Old Testament, uh, that word is found a number of times, not nearly as many, of course, as is in the New Testament. But you know who talks about a Savior most in the Old Testament? It is Isaiah. Isaiah the prophet, eight times, I believe it is, eight different times that Isaiah talks about the Savior, always with a capital S, always talking about the coming of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And so they were looking for somebody to save them from their sin. Now, I say this, Israel was looking for a king. Israel greatly needed a king. But the whole world needed a savior. Amen. God did not just send Israel a savior. He sent a savior to the world. Amen. Amen. And we can say hallelujah. What a savior. Amen. Thank God he sent the savior that was needed. Amen. Now our text is wonderful. Our text is a heavenly message from heavenly messengers. If you'll notice, it was an angel that spoke to Joseph, the angel of the Lord, Matthew one twenty, appeared unto Joseph in a dream and announced that the Savior was on his way. Amen. It was the angel Gabriel, a particular angel, that is mentioned in Luke chapter number 1, verse 26. The angel Gabriel was sent from God. It specifies that specifically to announce to Mary that she was going to be the vessel that God was going to use as the vehicle to bring his son into the world. Amen. And then in Luke chapter number 2, the text we read, that we didn't read, there's a group of angels. We read where one angel came to the shepherds and then a whole host of heavenly beings came and announced 
to those that gave glory to God. But this heavenly messenger and these heavenly messengers are announcing a heavenly message, and that is that a Savior has come. Amen. Amen. Now, Joshua taught in Sunday school this morning about witnessing. And in fact, that, this message is going to go right along with that. I, I didn't, I, in fact, I'd forgotten that he had mentioned about that and that he's going to be dealing with that this morning. And so that, that's all right. God knows exactly what he's doing. But here's the thought that I, that I was thinking about. What a wonderful message and how, how, how needed the world is to hear it. Amen. Right. Amen. What a wonderful message that God has given His Son. Not that He's promised to somewhere off way down the road, but that it has happened. It is a done deal. Salvation has come. Amen. 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 And so I've got two points I want to point out this morning real quickly. And I'll be out of the Honestly, I'm going to take just a minute. Number one, and these are not alliterated, but number one, as heavenly or as messengers of heaven, that's what we are. We're not heavenly messengers, but we're mess messengers of heaven. We are to rejoice in the Savior and make His presence known. Amen. Amen. Those angels rejoiced that a baby had been born. Right. Amen. I read something this week. It was talking about biographies. And it wasn't talking specifically about the birth of our Savior. But it was talking about how the that prior to Christianity becoming a, a prominent force in the world, prior to that, you can read biographies from way back and almost none of them mention the birth of the individual. Almost, and matter of fact, they didn't make much about birthdays. There was not a lot said about birthdays. Matter of fact, I remember a lady, she was an elderly lady when I was a little boy that came to Poplar Cove, which was the first church my dad pastored. This lady, uh, she... <laughs> She was not sure how old she was. She wasn't trying, as I said, she wasn't trying to fudge on it or lie about it. She did not know because they had a handwritten birth certificate. She said that the date that what she had been told, that the day she was born, that her mama was holding corn and started having contractions and went out to the end of the cornfield and had her baby under the tree, left the baby under the tree, went back and finished holding the corn. Now, you listen, thank God we don't live in those days anymore. Amen. But uh, but they, they just it wasn't a big deal. I mean if they didn't write those things down, but they're not wrote them in a Bible. You know, in a family Bible kept those, but they didn't make a big deal about births, particularly for Christianity. But they said almost almost all the biographies are a good large portion of the biographies that have been written since Christianity has become a known force in the world. And they start off talking about that baby being born. You know why? Because it is something wonderful when a baby's born in the world. Amen. Amen. It's wonderful. It's not just wonderful to the parents, just wonderful to the grandparents. It's a blessing to the whole world when babies are born in the world. Amen. That's why it's important that we do things God's way, by the way. Don't get messed up in this world system trying to mess all that up. Amen. I ain't got time to deal with that, but that's just the truth. Amen. Amen. Well, the angel of the Lord came to Joseph and told Joseph. By the way, Joseph... When he got this good news, Joseph was not on his knees praying. Joseph was in his bed, wrapped with doubts and fears. Joseph was had laid himself down, contemplating what's going on, and wondering what's going on. And you could imagine the consternation and the confusion. And I'm not going to have time to go down that very long. If I do, my message would get longer. But he's in a place of questions. He's in a place of doubts. He's in a place of fear. And that angel comes to him with good news that this baby being born is a special baby. That this is a wondrous thing. Amen. Mary is not being unfaithful. It's not terrible. This is good news. God's given his son. Amen. Amen. And I tell you, there are men and women and boys and girls all over our land that are laying on their beds today wrapped with doubts and wrecked with fear and, and wrecked with misunderstanding that they need somebody to tell them good news. God has sent His Son. Amen. 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 Good news. The Savior has come. Amen. Amen. They need to know that God has a plan of salvation for whosoever will come. Amen. Amen. They need to know that Jesus is the promise of God Fulfilled. Amen. 
I'm thinking about Joseph. Joseph's going to be a husband. Husbands need to know. Joseph's going to be a father. Dads need to know about Jesus. Joseph was a carpenter. And I tell you, workers, carpenters, whatever their trade, they need to know that a Savior has come. Right. Joseph was the lineage of David. He was an heir to the throne. So not just menial workers, but people even that are in lineage to, to reign on the throne deserve to know and need to know the gospel that Jesus Christ has come into the world. Amen. And I got thinking about the angel Gabriel coming to Mary, announcing that the child that Mary is going to have is going to be the Christ child. So I thought about Mary. She's a young, a young lady awaiting marriage. Young girls awaiting marriage need to know about the Savior. Amen. Mary's going to be a housewife. She's going to be working around the home. Those ladies need to know that Jesus has come. Amen. Mary at this time is a young lady, but women of all ages need to know that Jesus has come. Amen. Mary's a poor girl, even though she's of the ladies of the king. Amen. But people in any economic status need to know that Jesus has come. I say, let's carry the gospel message to them. Let's carry the good news to them as heavenly messengers. Amen. Then I thought about the angel of the Lord appearing to that uh, group of shepherds. I don't know how many there was there. It doesn't say. But there's not only the angel Lord, but then later he's joined by a multitude of heavenly hosts, singing praises unto God, and saying, glory to God in the highest. Amen. Amen. And I say that we need to be a witness even in the public. Amen. To the public. That's what I know us men, we've heard this again this second time, brother. Maybe it's because you have to tell men twice. Amen. Somebody said to you, you look at the Bible, God always, when he called, for example, he called Abraham, he'd have to do it twice. Abraham, Abraham. Mm -hmm. Call Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. Amen. Amen. Because you've got to tell him twice. They don't catch it the first time. <laughs> most time. Amen. But we're hearing this message again, and perhaps it is because we need it. We need to be reminded that we need to spread the gospel even in public. Don't be afraid to sing praises in public. Don't be afraid to glorify God in public. Amen. Amen. Don't be afraid. To believe God and tell about God in public. Don't be ashamed. God has done such a wonderful thing for you and I. Amen. Shout it out in the workplace. Rejoice about it in the marketplace. Worship and reverence God for it in the holy place. Amen. Amen. Let people know that a Savior is born. Amen. And then number two. My last point. And then I'll have a conclusion. My last point. I said as... Messengers of hell. We need to rejoice in the Savior. And we need to make his presence known. Let me say number two. As sinners in need of the Savior. We should heed the message we've heard. And seek his presence. Amen. Mary said how can this be? But when the angel told her that God was doing it. You know what she said? She surrendered to his will. Amen. Joseph could not comprehend how all this could be. But when he heard the message, he believed the message and took action towards the message. Amen. When these shepherds heard this good news, they heard, I'm sure they probably didn't know what all of this about the young child was about. They, they probably didn't understand all about it. But the angel had promised them, the angel said, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Amen. You know what they've been promised? To that lowly shepherds, they've been promised, if you'll seek him, you'll find him. They've been promised that. Amen. They didn't say, well, now, if your lineage is right, you've got the right, you know, you, you've got the right heritage, and you've got the right works, and you've got everything lined up right, then you can find him. No, they said, if you'll seek for him, you can find him. That's what the angels said. Amen. And that same is true today. I believe all those that seek the Savior can find Him. Amen. He is available to you if you'll just call upon Him. I believe that. Amen. Amen. Well, then we also know of another account. I didn't read that in Matthew chapter 2 of some other men that went seeking the Savior. They had a heavenly message. They had a, an, a, a star that moved in the heavens. Amen. And they were wise men. Some people think they were 
uh, maybe uh, stargazers, and they followed the stars. They were a lot of people actually believe that they were probably Chaldeans that had studied this, the studies of Daniel. And I don't have any problem believing that's possible. Amen. Amen. But they had heard about a Savior. They went looking for him that born king of the Jews. Amen. And they sought for him. They went to the wrong place. They made some wrong turns. But in seeking for him, you know what they did? They found him. Amen. They found him. Amen. Listen, I'm not for making false professions, but if you've made a misturn or two, don't quit seeking the Savior. You've not found him yet. Amen. Amen. Keep seeking after God. I think he will be found of you. Amen. The reason you're not found is not because he's hiding from you. It's just because you make some wrong turns. Amen. 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 So, uh, so we say these these wise men sought for him and found him. Amen. Yes. They had come from afar. Amen. They were carrying expensive gifts. They were themselves probably wealthy. Amen. You've heard the songs, We Three Men of Orient Art, We Three Kings. You've heard that? I don't know if they were kings or not, but they were apparently wealthy because of the gifts they gave were wealthy. Amen. And uh, they come from a long ways, and so uh, it would take some wealth probably to do that. But I'm simply saying this: they were, they found the young child, but when they did, their wealth did not stop them from bowing to him Amen. and worshiping him. Amen. They said he's king of the Jews. If these men were not Jews, they were recognizing him not just as king of the Jews. But king of the Gentiles too. Amen. Amen. They're recognizing him king of glory. I believe that's right. Amen. And so I'm saying this that they found the young child. They bowed and worshiped him. So you see the shepherds, poor lowly shepherds. You see the perhaps rich, wise men that have come from afar. I'll say whether you're rich or poor, if you'll seek after the Lord. Whether you're near or far, if you'll seek after the Lord. Whether you've got gifts or you're giftless, if you'll seek after the Lord, you can find Him. Amen. He will be found of you. Amen. And you'll find the Savior worthy of your worship. Amen. Now, in conclusion, let me say this. I'm going to go ahead and come give a song. Let me say this. Do, do you know Jesus? Do you know people that need to know about Jesus? Of course we do. If you don't know Jesus, would you come to him? If you do know Jesus, would you go tell about him? Amen. But let me say this thing about coming to Jesus. It started in Matthew. That's why I read that first. Of course, it's in our Bible first. <coughs> The thing about coming to Jesus is that he came for one thing. He did not come to save Israel from the Roman domination. He came to save them from their sins. Amen. He did not come to set them free from an overreaching government. He came to set them free from their sins. That's what he's looking to do today. If you'll come to Jesus, amen, he can rescue you from your sin, amen. Amen, I believe that's what it is. He'll save you from your sins. He will deliver you from your sins. He will set you free from the bondage of sin, amen. It may be lust, it may be drugs, it may be pornography, it may be confusion, it may be, uh, it may be demons, it may be a lot of things, but Jesus Christ can set you free. Free, Amen. if you'll come to him, he can save you from your sins. Amen. The Savior has come. Let's stand to our feet. You need to come. Is that what you want? You want salvation. You want freedom from your sins. Come to Jesus. If you do. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the truth. Simple, but profound. Thank you, Lord, that Christ came to save sinners. Thank you, Lord, you're still doing that, even in this day. I pray you would right now, Lord, deal with sinners, draw them. I pray you're God, cut through the fog and the confusion and the mess of sins. 